Um, welcome to our uh, Clarity Focus uh, session here in times of business crisis. Um, uh, uh, so for those of you who don't know me, John Logar, Consulting Unleashed. I've um, uh, been doing this for a very long time and I'm running this series to try and help as many people in our world of, uh, I guess, providing uh, digital marketing or internet marketing services or online marketing services as possible. One, to navigate their way through what's going on uh, uh, in terms of the opportunity that's happening right now. Um, uh, uh, number two, to give real tactical things that you can apply and go away and get into uh, the market with. So those are my, that's my goal. My goal is to help as many people as possible um, uh, to, uh, to one, take advantage of the opportunity that is out there. Uh, and number two, to provide relevant information, uh, things that are gonna be useful, tactical, uh, that you can apply uh, into the market. So today, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sharing my screen, just so you, um, uh, um, so we've got, just moving that out of the way. All right, so uh, let's, um, let's get into it. So today, uh, lead generation and offers is what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna be answering questions as well throughout this. Um, I'm also gonna ask you to interact with me just so I know that you can actually hear me. And just so I do know that you can, uh, that you can hear me right now, I just wanna make sure uh, that, um, that we are uh, there, uh, there we go. Let me just open up the chat. All right, we'll put that aside so I can see it. And I know that I'm there. So I'm just trying to move things around on my screen. All right, so, um, so if you can, uh, so Alan says loud and clear, uh, plan to be here, invited Heidi to join us. Thanks Heidi, uh, appreciate you coming along. Uh, Bill. All right. So I just so I know that you can actually hear me and you can see my screen right now. Just type in one on your keyboard and in the chat. Just type one just so I know that we're all on. Yes, yes. All right. Good. All right. So let's get into um, uh, lead generation and offers. Awesome. We've got everybody saying one. Great. All right. So Yeah, you shouldn't be need. You shouldn't need to see me. You should be able to see the screen um, uh, right now. So that's the the key. Um, Damien Papworth, good to have you here. So, um, uh, and thanks for being on, by the way, Damien, because uh, 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 something that you're doing right now is going to be very supportive of what we're going to be talking about today. So, um, so we're going to focus on clarity. Uh, focus uh, essentially lead generation and offers. So one of the things that we need to look at is where we can get free leads from, right? So our familiar list, like it's like we're in, right now, think about where we are and what's going on. People are at home, people are scared. There's a whole bunch of things going on that are, that are, that are um, uh, frightening a lot of people. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to generate some lists. We need to be communicating and contacting the people. So where do we get free leads? Our familiar list is friends, family, colleagues, associates, and alumni. Friends, family, colleagues, associates and alumni are a familiar list, right? People that we know, people that we're connected to, that we have had conversations with, people who know us. Right now, every single person should be running communication to their current uh, uh, familiar list to let them know what's going on. Scary times right now. I'm working with businesses to solve some of the problems and issues that businesses are facing right now. And here's what we're doing or what we're working on. If you know anybody that right now that's panicking in business or that is stuck or is looking for new options, um, just let them know that I'm actually trying to help people out uh, and I've got some ideas that might be worthwhile them taking into consideration. There's your email that you can send out to the familiar list people right now, okay? So LinkedIn, great list. It's, one of, it's the best business database on the planet but you need a strategy for your communication. Social media groups and connections. Every single one of us should be joining business groups in our cities. Not internet marketing groups, not, not internet marketer uh, people, right? Business groups, right? Facebook group, Chicago, business group, Chicago, business group, Washington, DC, Paris, London, Melbourne, Sydney, um, uh, Miami, wherever you are in the world, if big or small cities have business Facebook groups. So join business Facebook groups, join the social media groups uh, and connections they, because there's tons of business in there asking lots of questions right now for options. They need help, right? Your focus as a person that is delivering your product or service in the market right now, you need to go from being marketing to being helpful. That's, that is your marketing. Being helpful is, is your marketing right now. Okay, so social media groups and connections, scrape leads, aggregator sites. So if you're in the uh, contractor or, or building services market, there's this website, it's called How's 
www.houdoublez.com, H-O-U-Z-Z.com. This is a global website. Uh, there are 50 different niches. Now, get this. The people that are actually on that website are paying $25,000 a year to put a listing for leads in that website. So these people are already spending money on marketing. There's 50 different niches that are spending money on marketing right now to generate leads from hows, right? So you need to put yourself on that list, yes? Okay, you need to find that lead. You don't need to put yourself on list. What you need to do is look at that list of businesses. Easy to find. They're broken up into categories. They show you the people that are advertising the most are the people on the first two pages. So 40 businesses right now are paying more than $30,000 to have a listing on house, H-O-U-Z-Z.com or .com.au or .co.uk or .ca if you're in Canada or .mx if you're in Mexico, uh, if you're in Italy, wherever you are in the world, right? Uh, house is a global website. There are over... Uh, five million businesses on hows, and if you're if you're in your local in your location where you're searching from, if you pick a category, it's going to show you how many businesses they have in that category. That's the cool thing about hows. So that's an aggregator site. Yelp is an aggregator site. Any business directory or group directory for an industry niche is an aggregator site. Um, trade show listings. Every major association this last year held a conference and a trade exhibition. So what you can do is you can go to the website, look at their past uh, event, go to the trade show directory, and it gives you names, phone numbers, contacts, uh, lists on those directories. Those association websites and those trade show listings are huge. Uh, the largest trade show listings, if you're looking at product categories, is CES, uh, the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, they do the show in Singapore, in Berlin, and in Las Vegas. They just made it to Las Vegas before uh, the shutdown occurred, so they got their conference out of the way. More than 200,000 people attended that. 67,000 people are C-level executives that attend that show, right? Decision makers. And there is a list of over 4,500 exhibitors that spent more than $30,000 to be there. Some of them spent hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. Right now, those companies uh, who use that as their strategy for marketing can't do that anymore. So how are they going to get to the market? They need your help. That's a massive list right now of businesses that have money. They can't allocate the funds towards a trade show anymore, the millions of dollars and that. So they've got capital that they can invest in your marketing. Tons of money. That's a big aha list right there. The CES, Consumer Electronics Show, trade show list that's online and it's free. And if you go into the directory listing, sometimes it gives you the managing director's name. Sometimes it gives you their phone number, their cell phone number, and sometimes it gives you their direct email address. How cool is that, right? I bet you every single person is writing that down right now. <laughs> and the CES people are gonna be inundated with lead opportunities. So um, trade show, association websites. So, for example, uh, let's look at um, uh, uh, a lot of association websites have directories for their members. Find a member to help you with their product or service. So, in the contractor market, in the home services, in professional services, a lot of these websites have a directory of listings of their members who you can go to and get help from. And so, now they've got listings. So, they've got the names, phone numbers, emails, location. All of that is in the association website. Right, that are sitting there. Tons of opportunity to get free leads here. Right, um, um, we'll talk about messaging in a moment. But association websites, very very cool. Uh, databases. There are plenty of databases. There's things like Manta, Compass. Now Compass is not spelled incorrectly. K O M P A S S is the name of the website. Uh, on that one cool thing about Compass website is you can go niche location and it'll give you a bunch of businesses and then if you drill down into the business it will sometimes give you the managing director uh, the ceo all of that and you have all that access to that information for free which is really really cool the a to z reference guide is in a guide if you look at if you live in the united states it is a free directory that you have access to in your public library system so guess what we can do we can access the public library system if you have a library card and if you don't have a library card guess what you can get your library card online right um uh, so you have a library card you can go into their system go and access the a to z reference guide for business and you can go and download lists of companies how many employees how much money they made in the last three years um who the business owner is what their activities are you can get all of that information for free right all information for our us friends all for free in australia the dbs uh, database listing is available in our library system as well a national library system has uh, the Dun & Bradstreet directories that you can get access to, I believe, online. Uh, there are other business services in the US. USA Inc. 
USA.com. Uh, the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing list is a great list. Uh, the Inc. 5,000 European companies, fastest growing Euro European companies, great list, right? There is no shortage. There's no excuse that anybody doesn't have any leads. And you can go industry specific niche. You can go business category. You can go broad, right? You can even look at uh, directories in local markets. There is no, um, I can't get email addresses from Reference USA, but you can get email addresses if you call those companies and say who is the best person to email. Uh, so you can go and get those contacts. Um, so uh, uh, you're going to have to find, there are pl there's plenty of software tool, tools that you can use. Uh, two of my favorite email marketing tools are quickmail.io quickmail and mailshake.com. Uh, these are uh, uh, email tools that you can use to um, to send out cold email and you can set up cadences, you can see open rates, you can do all that sort of stuff, right? But now we don't just have to do cold email, we can reach out to people socially as well. We can put posting and that sort of stuff. All we're saying is one of the first people sit and say, how do I get leads? Here's how you get leads. There is There are several resources right now, thousands of resources where you can get free leads right now. Free leads, right, for everyone, you know? Uh, um, you know, <laughs> I was gonna. I was just about to have an Oprah moment. Free leads for you. Free leads for you. Free leads for you. <laughs> um, um, but there is no excuse why we cannot have the engagement or connection in the marketplace, right? So that's number one. Okay. Number two, paid leads, right? Uh, there are lists for sales online, uh, lead list owners and generators. There are people you can go to online, you can Google search uh, uh, for paid leads. And some of these companies right now uh, will actually do trials on their lists so you can see the quality of their lists. Um, um, uh, I have a friend of mine who just negotiated with a company. Uh, they normally charge $2,000 for, uh, um, I think it was uh, uh, a very specific uh, uh, 800 lead list that had phone numbers and emails. It was normally $2,000. He negotiated down to $250. So he got a, he's got an 850 highly qualified, highly uh, um, uh, vetted list uh, from an aggregator for $250. Right now, you can do deals with list brokers as well, right? And by the way, list brokers is a business that's going through the roof. Uh, so people are generating lead lists online. But you can buy leads and you can buy them as for as little as $60, as in you can get 100 leads for like 60 bucks if you look online. Uh, there are also uh, um, people who will actually craft campaigns for you specifically to generate a lead for you where they go out to the market and find leads. Uh, that's another way that you can actually generate um, um, more leads uh, through paid leads lead listings and there are services out there right now there's plenty of them um, uh, if all you need to do is google uh, there are white label services that are doing uh, lead connection and lead strategy on linkedin so they will actually go and do build your message uh, craft your profile go out there and uh, some of those people are getting will get you between anywhere between 10 and up to 30 phone calls per month i've seen people do higher it depends on the service uh, and a lot of those people know what they're doing they, they do a pretty good job i've had lots of success with people who uh, do direct lead gen off linkedin that is paid right the other thing is you got Facebook, Google, YouTube ads. These are the three, the troika, the trio of uh, direct marketing to where people are searching right now. Now, you need to think about what your strategy is, who your target market is, what is your offer, what lead magnet, if you're using a lead magnet, what is the appointment mechanism? How do they make appointments with you? Do they pick up the phone and call you? Do they go into your uh, uh, calendar and make an appointment? Uh, what is your optimization of your campaign? And A-B split testing. Now, if you don't know how to run ads for yourself, and you're not, in the, you're not in the ad space, or you're not in Facebook, or you're not in Google, or you're not YouTube, anybody that's doing advertising should be running your own ads. If you're, if you're selling advertising to the market, you should be running ads right now. Because let me tell you, people are looking for people who know how to run ads. Right, there's a whole bunch of people in the marketplace right now that are sitting at home going, my God, we should, you know, that, that Facebook guy that came to us six months ago that we told to go away because we think that Facebook doesn't work. Well, I'm looking at Facebook and all I'm seeing is ads from my competitors. So we've got to get in on this. There are so many people right now looking for how they can do these things in the market. But for you, you can do paid lead list options. You can get bought leads. You can get uh, you can get people to generate leads for you, or you can run your own lead generation. Um, if you are a Facebook ad person, if you are a Google ads person, uh, you know how to use YouTube ads. You should be running ads for yourself because if you're not running ads for yourself and you're selling ads to people, that doesn't sit with me ethically or morally or from a uh, uh, from a um, um, 
I guess, a congruency, right? If you're telling other people to run AdWords campaigns and you don't run any AdWords campaigns for yourself, that just doesn't make any sense um, um, uh, at all. So, um, quick mail. So, uh, um, uh, I think it's Thea or C. C. Buddha. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, the two email, serv two mailing services that I would use. One is Quick Mail. So Q U I C K M A I L E dot I O. Quick Mail or Mailshake.com. Like Mail Milkshake dot com. Mailshake dot com. Right. Those are two great services. There's plenty of others. If you Google uh, cold outreach software, there's tons of others. But those two are really, really good because they've got lots of great support. They've got lots of tactical things and ideas. And they are also, I understand that those two companies right now are dealing with how people are reaching out. Right now, cold email is going through the roof. The problem is that if you're in Europe, you've got the, uh, the, GDPR, the GDRP laws. If you're in Canada, you've got some rules and regulations around, around cold email. But they have strategies on how you can get around that. Um, uh, in those marketplaces, in Japan, those sorts of places, you can't do cold email. So, uh, but there are ways, and those two websites have uh, ways in which to get around that. And they're doing some really cool testing right now. They're doing some amazing messaging. They're giving away a lot of free stuff to help people in this market. So I love those two services, quickmail.io uh, and mailshake.com. Uh, so if you're looking for a service or a system that's gonna work from a direct outreach point of view, these are two uh, ways. Um, but we're not gonna get into how you go and do cold, uh, cold email I'm going to talk about uh, in a moment so these are where we get paid leads right so what is your lead gen strategy right now that's a really big question here um, I'd love to know right now if you can just type in just type in what's your number one lead gen strategy right now just type in the into the chat just so I can see what is the number one lead gen uh, strategy you're doing right now Adam says, how do I identify prospects who can afford my services? Anybody that's running advertising right now or marketing can afford your services right now. Um, Alan says, cold outreach. Kristen says, cold email. Samantha, email, cold emails. LinkedIn outreach uh, to 350 agencies a day. Yes, Damien, awesome. Uh, Chris, uh, direct outreach. Uh, Nuno, actually cold email using Mailshake. Uh, Carl, uh, customer list and Facebook groups, yes. Uh, Howard, cold email and familiar list, awesome. Um, Adam, uh, using uh, CEO, uh, Adam Cowan Terry, awesome. Um, Peter Smith, email posts in business groups. Isn't it interesting that not one person right now is actually running paid ads? Is anybody running paid ads to generate leads? Because right now, paid ads are working like gangbusters. Uh, and it's cheap. Paid ads right now are really cheap. Uh, Damien's running Facebook ads, yep, uh, awesome. Um, uh, so everybody's going email, LinkedIn, uh, Alan's, yes, running Facebook ads, awesome. Uh, you were running Facebook ads uh, off, uh, off, turning back on with new lead magnets, yes. Facebook ads, yep, awesome. Okay, so a lot of people are running a lot of the things that I've talked about, generating leads, doing the cold outreach, running some Facebook ads, uh, YouTube uh, ads launching this week, uh, awesome. Damien, um, YouTube, YouTube uh, 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 cost per lead is really, really cheap. Uh, YouTube's very powerful. Video, I mean, what are people doing? They're on their freaking mobile devices watching video, right? So you need to think about what am I generating? And you need to be generating leads on a, uh, like you need to be bringing leads on a daily basis or activating and, and engaging leads on a daily basis, right? So um, uh, what is our action needed offer right now? So action needed offer. So I want to talk about this a little bit because we can't go to the market and say, do you want leads? Most, no, nobody's gonna to respond to you if you sit and say, hey, I can help you with leads. I had somebody who was on, I was talking to somebody, I was on a, I was on a webinar uh, the other day and somebody said that oh, I'm running ads right now and uh, to ask people, uh, what problems are you facing right now in the crisis and I can help you. That was the ad that they ran and I'm thinking, well, nobody's gonna to respond to that. So, well, I haven't had a single response yet. Well, there's a reason for that, why that person hasn't had a single response. First of all, nobody knows who that person is. Second of all, uh, what actual problems is he actually focusing on in the offer? Uh, the third thing is, well, what was the process to be able to help them? What was the context in the campaign? There was none of that thought, thought that none of that thinking of what is it that I'm doing and what is it that people are looking for that would be helpful or useful for them to take advantage of, right? So if you're running ad campaigns um, in terms of your offers, and I'm going to share with you some examples of this, but if you're running ad campaigns in terms of your offers, you need to think about where the market is at. People are doing three things right now. There are people who are literally just shut down, panicked. 
they've completely knee-jerk reaction and they've literally out of business. There are thousands and thousands of businesses that have just literally closed their doors and have not thought about what the hell they're doing to stay open or to make money or to be uh, in business. So that's a big category of people that have dropped out of the market. The second group of people, which is a, which is a very large part of the market, is they don't know what to do. They've been laying off staff, they're trying to preserve cash flow, they're trying to react uh, to you know, how can we serve our clients in a way that we can uh, 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 help them face to face. There's all this stuff that's going on right now, but they're still, they're, they're kind of doing a little few things and they're kind of, they're, they're actually you know, pretty much plateauing out, right? If not starting to decline because they, but they look for, they're looking for options and these people have money, right? They do have money, right? Because they were in business a moment ago. Um, uh, and so, you know, they were transacting, but all of a sudden they've stopped, right? And so they're looking for options. That's the third, that's the third market that uh, is looking for options right now. The second market, sorry. The third market is the one that I'd love to be talking to and the one that you want to be opening the question up. So three people, uh, I'm panicked, I'm out. Right, panicked, I'm out, I'm shutting down, I'm closing my eyes, I'm left to the mercy of the market. Second group of people, got to do some things, making a few adjustments, I really don't know what to do, I'm really uncertain, really unsure, but I'm just trying to you know, keep my nose above water and make sure that we can ride this thing out, right? So there's a big part of the market. But the third group of people are sitting and saying, I'm putting strategies, plans, we're re-evaluating how we deal with our customers, we're putting new offers out, we're recognizing the problems and the challenges that our customers are having, uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to engage, we're looking at ways of doing things differently, we realize that shit, we should have been online ages ago, we really didn't know what we were doing online, but now we're doing everything we can, we're trying to learn as much as possible, we're being proactive and we're looking for opportunities in the marketplace. These people are going to be in business, stay in business and thrive, right? Be in business, stay in business, thrive. So right now, now your offer needs to reflect those the, those two categories. Category number two, uh, need some help. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm looking for options, right? Category number three, I'm looking for I'm looking for everything. Like I'm really paying attention to what we can do to not only um, uh, be in this business, but also to come out of this in a positive light. And remember that in the next two to three months, two to three months, there's a window. We're going to get into a mini boom, right? Uh, that mini boom is people coming back to work. That mini boom is people getting back into the market, cash coming back into the market, and people are gonna need a lot of services. There's lots of phone inquiries. So my question is, and even your question when you're going to the market is, what are you talking about? How are you uh, uh, um, uh, having those conversations? Are you ready to get back to work, right? What are you doing to be in work right now? And are you ready to get back to work? What are you doing to acquire, uh, to uh, let your existing customers know that you're still in business and that they can uh, work with you in a new way, right? These are all the things that you need to be thinking about in terms of your offers in the marketplace, right? So, um, uh, what are the offers that our niches need to be offering? So you need to, so if you're doing lead generation or you're doing customer acquisition or you're doing client engagement or re-engaging sales automation, uh, email marketing, all this sort of stuff, you don't need to be thinking about, um, uh, um, they need, you need to be addressing the fact that businesses also need to be offering differently than what they used to be offering before this market right? They need to do things differently because customers are sitting at home and they're behaving differently. I was just talking, I was just got off a call with our consulting champions and uh, one of our, one of our champions' son is in the fencing contractor market and he is absolutely flat out and he's doing two things. He's uh, using Google My Business to get clients and he's running Facebook ads in his uh, local market and he's booked out for the next two months while everybody else is in lockdown this guy's fencing business is going through the roof and he's booked out and he's still taking on jobs every day like he's literally taking on jobs every day right in the market two things running facebook ads and doing google my business uh, from an seo point of view those are the only two things that are going to that are keeping him going and he is booked out solid for the next two months right because he doesn't need to physically touch his clients he can wave to them from the fence, from the fence line of where he's working whilst they're at the front door. He can take payments online. He can get contracts and agreements signed online. So he's letting people know, say, listen, we are 100% uh, you know, uh, um, uh, compliant with the health uh, requirements uh, in this time of this, uh, in the time of coronavirus and COVID-19, right? We, we, are, we are in compliance. So they went online, got a service certificate. This is what he, show, he shares with his clients, right? Number two, we make it easy for you to, we make it easy for us to do a quote. We can actually do the quote virtually as we do a Google search and the map fencing line um, from above and we can see the measurements and the requirements 
and we can run a quote for you uh, by online. So we don't have to do a measure and quote showing up, we can actually do it virtually, right? Uh, to give you the idea. And then we can show you online and show you how to pick different materials. Uh, we're gonna walk you through uh, through our planning session uh, to show you what your options are in the fencing. We're gonna show you different colors. We're gonna show you different structure. We can do all of that online, right? And so his offer is, hey, if you need your fence fixed, if you've got a broken fence or you need a fence fixed, we can get it fixed and you don't have to uh, uh, shake my hand. You don't have to stand in, be in my presence. We can do this all virtually and you can have the fence hopping up around you while you're safe and comfortable in your home in lockdown, right? Um, uh, and you could be looking outside, seeing your new fence pop up, uh, grow uh, uh, within hours um, uh, whilst we're there, right? Fencing contractor, business through the roof. Now, fencing contractor market is huge, huge. Uh, all he's adapted to is he does his quoting online, he does his contracts online, and he takes payment online. That's it, right? Just shows you different offers, right? So the question is, what, what are their customers? If you talk about the buyer's journey with your prospective customer, that's where you're going to win because it's the buyer's behavior that puts cash in their till. It's also a very different approach to take. You're going to stand out from every other person in the marketplace is saying, hey, we can get you some customers online. We can help you with Facebook ads. We can help you with AdWords. You know, nobody cares, right? That's not what they're interested in. What they're interested in is how the hell do I stay in business, be in business, and more importantly, take advantage of perhaps of doing business in a new way. So one of the things you want to take into consideration is the buyer's journey, how the customer is engaging the market. Really, really important, okay? So any questions so far? By the way, biggest takeaway, if you can type in the takeaways. Um, uh, biggest takeaway so far. So I know you're listening, just type in the chat. Biggest takeaway so far. From what we've shared i just want to know that you're alive and well and you are with me biggest takeaway carl run ads yeah absolutely mate absolutely run ads uh stay in your business during a uh, challenging time yes some businesses are still aggressively marketing not some howard lots of businesses are aggressively marketing lots of them are out there aggressively marketing. not some lots lots uh, Facebook ads are doing great. Yes, they are. Facebook ads work. What are we doing? We're on our social media feeds all day long. What else? Any other takeaways? Any takeaways from consider my approach to offer with regards to my services? Yes, Adam, you absolutely need to reconsider your offer. Jay, previous trade show lists are big, big opportunity for clients. Yes, because they're spending tons of money. Those businesses that were going to trade shows, think of all the associations that were going to hold events and trade shows in the next six months. All of those trade shows are closed. Where are those clients going to get clients and business right now? Where are all those businesses that were spending millions of dollars? They've got cash, right? They're not, they can't spend on a trade show, but they can take a portion of that revenue and go direct to the market online. So you can do virtual trade show, right? So that's a big, big money list right there. Huge money list, right? Uh, beware of douchey offers, absolutely. Now, people are aware of douchey offers too. People are aware of douchey offers. Uh, would you suggest niching down on a service or an industry? Both. <laughs> Make one, you know, right now, every single person here, you need to get an offer out to the market. Pick one offer and run with the offer. And, and you might have to get creative and you might need to repackage or reprocess your offer in relation to what you're doing and how that applies to the marketplace. Um, change your message on your marketing. Uh, take the customer through your offer with education and empathy, yes. Um, so, and the other thing that I talked about here is think about how your customers, not your clients that you're gonna go after, but think about how their customers are behaving right now. How is this business, right, operating in a way that makes it easy for their customers to engage them right now? You need to think a little bit differently in the way we approach this, right? So just like I said, the fencing contractor business um, is sitting there saying, hey, we're still in business. They're running ads. We can get your fence up while you're in lockdown, right? Um, uh, we don't need to talk. We, we, we want to keep you safe, keep you healthy, and we want to keep you secure. We want to put a fence around your home, right? Um, um, so they're, so they're, they're doing uh, the very thing where they're operating in the way that the customer's thinking. Uh, you don't need to, we don't need to see each other face to face. We can do this on video connect, right? Uh, we don't need to, they're using WhatsApp. They're using WhatsApp to connect with their customers. Uh, we don't need to, so this, your documents and your acceptance can be signed online. Payment, we'll take the deposit and the payment, we can take that online. If you decide to pay for the whole thing up front, we'll provide you an incentive, right? Um, uh, so I'm just... Uh, 
yeah, Chris, a lot of conferences are switching virtual. And by the way, like I've got people who do Facebook ads to fill conference seats. They're switching their strategy to run Facebook ads to get paid uh, tickets to live events that are happening virtually. Sorry, virtual events, not live events. People are selling tickets to virtual events and people are buying those tickets. And people are running, and there's people I know running Facebook ads to those markets, yeah? Uh, should we offer a discount uh, for our services because of what's going on? So uh, that's a great question, Heidi. Um, not necessarily. So some of my champions right now are charging a premium. Uh, $15,000 set up for an email marketing campaign, uh, $6,000 a month to manage that campaign and manage some other communication. Uh, they're getting a premium for running email marketing campaigns. Uh, we had another person who's $6,000 a month to do email marketing for an e-commerce site. Uh, uh, $10,000 setup fee, $10,000 setup fee, $6,000 a month uh, uh, that are doing. So these are premium pricing offers. I mean, that's eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars deals, right? Sitting out there, they're not discounting their services. Now, that's not to say that you can't provide uh, a service. So one of the things that that we need to be aware of is um, uh, uh, thinking of what can we provide that's the same for less, right? Or what can we do, right? What can what more can we do? How do we add more can we do for the same? So think about your offer is can you add something to the offer rather than dropping the price? Can you add value and keep the price? Or if you're going to provide incentive, you need to provide an incentive with a reason. So don't just offer a discount. Don't, don't provide, provide a discount. The way that I would position a discount to the market would be, uh, it would be in a very simple form, in a very simple format. And here's how I would position a discount. I would say, hey, right now we know that businesses need to be out there. We normally charge a premium for the service we provide, but we want to make sure that we keep some cash with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 30% of our money into your campaign. So instead of paying us the full rate of whatever, $1,500, what we can do is for $1,000, we will provide you with the same level of service and we will put our $500, right, uh, for that service towards to helping you so you can save that cash and invest that into your ads and invest that into whatever, right? So that's a, that's a way of putting that you're providing value or adding value. I had somebody, one of my champions the other day is giving away two thousand dollars worth of strategy and design strategy design for websites right so normally they do a discovery session they charge the client for discovery um, and they charge for graphic design right? as part of that package is graphic design so what they're saying is look what we'll do is we'll give you the blueprint right normally we charge you two thousand dollars for the blueprint um, and we're going to put a thousand dollars towards design for uh, the site now they're still selling by the way their average website is 15 to 25 grand right every website is 15 to 25 grand for a website right they're still selling um, they're, they're providing a, a perceived value, cash value, for the client in the offer, right? So right now, this is what we're doing. We're going to put $3,000 of our money into helping you so you can save that $3,000 and invest it elsewhere or invest it in your marketing or your campaigning and so that at least you're going to get yourself structured and set up in a way to maximize your, your opportunity to sell, right? So um, uh, hopefully that makes sense um, um, how do they charge so much? Adam, you need to think about the value of the customers that they're bringing. So for example, the financial planning company is spending over $100,000 on email marketing, right? Uh, they've got a very, very large list and they know that if they get a half a percent conversion on their list, that half a percent is gonna be worth about $600,000 in revenue. A, a half a percent, a 0.5% conversion on their list is gonna be worth 600 grand. So let me ask you, is it worth investing $100,000 to put in a strategy to go and collect that $600,000? It's a no brainer, right? Um, you know, the average sale in this particular, that particular company is about $5,000 per customer, right? So to charge five grand a month or seven grand a month for email marketing services to, uh, to craft the strategy, manage the campaign, monitor the conversions, do all that sort of stuff is a no brainer. That's how they can charge so much for what they do in the marketplace, yeah, if that makes sense, right? So, um, the next, there are three offers your market needs to be making right now. There are three offers that every market needs to be making right now. Number one, they need to do, they need to be, uh, provide a relevant offer to its current customers. We are still in business, operating in a new way, and here's how we're helping, right? The first message that every business needs to do right now is a relevant offer. We are still in business, right? Here's, he's still in business, we're operating in a new way. This is how we're serving you in this new way, right? And 
here's how we're helping. Here's something we've put together that makes it easy for you. Like the fencing guy, right? We don't need to speak. We can go do virtual. We can do immediate quotes with uh, Google Maps. We have the technology to give you accurate pricing and structure. We can select the materials and show you examples online together as we design your fence. We can do so adapting. We're letting you know how we do business, how we make it easy for you, right? And then from there, we're going to provide you with a quote. You can sign online, pay on, take payment online right so how are we adapting what you know this is the questions you should be asking business owners right now how are you actually letting your existing customers know that they can stay with you and they're still paying with you how have you changed the way you do business how do you make it easy for them to engage and buy your services if you're a business to business or a service-based business how are you doing right now what is your strategy to do that right so that's you know what we're talking about here is emailing out phoning contacting uh you know zooming right what are we doing right number two so how do we distribute that message right number two we need to we need to engage all current and past and quotes with an incentivized deal we are still open we want to save you money right now here is a 30 percent. don't call it a lockdown deal i'm just using that as a word don't don't use coronavirus in your marketing. Don't use COVID-19 in your marketing. Do not use the word lockdown. I'm just using this as an example. I just want to make sure that that's very clear. You know, here's a 30% lockdown deal and free delivery um, or our new way of doing business, right? So the second thing they need to be doing is going to every single past contact that they've had in the market, every single past customer, every single person where they can connect socially with their family list and all that sort of stuff. The very thing that I told you to do at the very beginning, they should be doing as well right so the second offer is we need to go we need to use the resource of our current lists and current contacts the thing with this offer or the thing with this uh, communication engagement is that now we're letting people know that they should have been collecting emails so if you don't have an email right or you don't have a list or you don't have things then you need to create a mechanism right now to make it relevant so number three advertise right facebook google ads youtube ads instagram ads messenger ads with relevant offers to the market relevant offers to the market right so think about what people are spending money on right now i i could have ordered online some stationery but i i decided because i needed to get out i hopped in a car and i went to a stationery store that stationery store was flat out flat chat they were busy staples is coming back in america office works in australia is surging because everybody's working from home right? So people are buying their products. Uh, and let me tell you, some of their shelves were empty. I couldn't believe a stationery, a big stationery warehouse had empty shelves, right? Because people have been raiding and hoarding stocks, you know? Uh, you know, we need to get as many pens as we can, just in case the pens run out, right? Or the ink runs out, right? Um, it was really weird, right? Can't, you know, can't sell enough laptops, can't sell enough desktops, can't sell enough monitors, can't sell enough audio equipment, can't sell enough microphones. You know, can't sell enough. Like it's just got, it's just going crazy, right? Can't get enough of those things in stock, emptying my shelves, right? So, um, uh, you know, we need to run campaigns that are relevant to the market in how they're behaving. You need to think more strategically about what you're doing, right? About how the market is behaving and what you're doing. But these are the three things that they need to do. You need to be online. You need to let people know, and you need to be visible. If you're not visible right now, and your competitor is visible, guess who's getting all the phone calls and who will get all the phone calls when we get back into this mini boom in the next two to three months? Right? We need to get really creative with our offers. We need to be very mindful of how we run our campaigns in the marketplace. Right? Um, I should put that YouTube. Oops. YouTube and Instagram, right? Instagram is going off the charts right now. Messenger ads. Okay, all things that we should be running right now in the marketplace. That says Instagram, big M at the end with a name in the middle, right? So um, let's look at what the businesses need right now in relation to making it easy for their customers to buy. Um, number one, everybody should be, every, every local business right now needs to be doing GMB, the Google My Business. They need to get the listings, they need to get citations. Now, before anybody mentions this, right now GMB has stopped getting, giving reviews or getting reviews. That's fine, that's not really, that's, that's not gonna be the greatest hindrance to uh, um, actively being there online, but you need to have Google My Business. Any, all our SEO people, our SEO experts, you can charge 
you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, up to four thousand dollars to set that thing up. Uh, then you might charge anywhere between five hundred to a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month to continue to provide and support and create the SEO that is that can be created with citations and with information, with images, designs, uploading uh, photos, making it dynamic so that they can actually rank in that. Uh, that third section of those three businesses that are highlighted in Google Maps, right? So that to me is a very simple, easy product that you can sell to the marketplace. All their SEO people, you need to be doing that for any local business or market. Remember, local business right now, dear, they're struggling and they're trying to figure out the whole on online marketing thing right now, right? So this is a big, big opportunity for the Google My Business people. So. Um, landing pages reflect the current situation and uh, for offers that they are making. So I want you to think about that for a moment, right? You don't change your website right now in business. You don't reflect anything that's going on where people are at lockdown, all that sort of stuff, but you leave your website up there. If your website, if the information you've got on the website isn't relevant to what people are searching right now, they're going to go past you. They're just going to go somewhere else. So what to me, your front page of your website needs to address the very thing that people need to pay attention to in relation to how you help them with your product or service. Every single business right now needs to change their freaking front page of their website, right? Because it needs to change. It needs to reflect what's going on. It needs to reflect how you make it easy. What are the different things you need to do? What are the steps? You know, the four things, here's the three steps on how we can help you right now. One, two, three. Where's that on people's websites right now? right? Websites and landing pages need to reflect how they're helping customers with what they're offering and what they're doing to be in the marketplace. Remember the theme that we should be operating under as business owners is help, help, right? How can we help? How can we help, right? How can we help? How can we help right now? Question mark. My Google pen is not playing with me. Right now, what's the question mark? In fact, let's just do that a little bit better. Sorry, let's just be a little bit more. Question mark, right? How can we help right now is really important, okay? So, um, things that you need to be aware of, landing pages need to change, right? Um, our websites need to change right now, right? So, new websites to pivot uh, um, uh, that should be to pivot to meet market demand, not for pit, for not meet market demand, for mark to meet market demand. There's a little bit of a spelling mistake here in my little slides here. Um, uh, that should be just cross that out. That should be uh, two, right? We'll cross that out. We'll put a two in there. How's that? A little bit, a little bit dynamic, right? Need to pivot, right, to meet market demand. So. Um, you know, we've got Damien Papworth on here who runs Global Top Marketing. He has pivoted in his business to provide people with niche landing pages and webs. You'll see, great, this is meant for you, Damien, by the way. This is to demonstrate the point of what you're doing here, where you can actually go to business and say, listen, let me, one, one thing right now, your website isn't helping people in relation to where they're at right now. We need to quickly address that, change that, and adapt. Or if you have a new product that, you're, that you have created, to meet the new market demand, we need to create a website or we need to create a niche uh, website for the product to be able to address the market demand. If you are right now on your websites, you need to make sure that you're reflecting, right, how you're helping people in the market with their current demand, with the current issues that are going on for you, right? Understand that you need to address these same sorts of things. So new websites, new landing page, you need to pivot, so new offers. Uh, you need to create, this is an opportunity for you right now, right? Um, let me tell you, it has never been more important before, but email marketing campaigns to improve customer communication and increase education and offers is becoming absolutely paramount and vital. Um, uh, one of the things, let me just go down here. So there are three things that we need to do in business, right? Uh, we need uh, customers. need more customers, right? We need, um, uh, uh, need them to uh, increase their average sale. The value of every average sale. And we need to nurture and retain customers. This area right here is becoming the most important part of business, right? Nurturing and retaining customers is becoming right now, people are starting to realize that they haven't been paying attention to their existing customers, 
They haven't been looking after their customers, right? They also need to realize that they need to maximize the average revenue per customer. So they need to be uh, upselling. They need to be cross-selling. And they need to retain margins. They need to also increase margins, right? In terms of what they do, right? They need, these are the things they need to do as business owners right now. So it's never been more important. How, do you, how are you doing this, right? Um, how are you communicating right now? Most people aren't communicating at all in the marketplace, but now they have to, right? Businesses, now, and I'm, just, I'm talking about agency business. So a lot of agencies are coming to me right now, panicking that lots of clients have left their agency. And so I'm sitting and saying, okay, great. Before they left, how often did you communicate with them? Uh, we used to send them a PDF of the results once a month to the ad campaign. Did you get on the phone with these people, build a relationship, talk to these people? No. Uh, did you, when you onboarded them, did you set your expectations uh, in a way so that you haven't had any friction or challenges or issues? No, haven't done that. Um, did you uh, let them know how you're going to be working with them into the future, adjusting your campaigns, getting better results, improving the, the, the opportunity for them to convert um, uh, and do that? No. Uh, did you talk about ways that they can improve their commercial conversions, provide some support, some suggestions, some, way, some ways you can do that? No. So do you understand why they lost all their, a lot of their agency clients? I saw one agency that went from $100,000 a month in recurring revenue to $10,000 a month this month in March. Can you imagine generating 100 grand cash in recurring revenue one month to literally in less than a week to down to $10,000 a month? And the reason why is because they, don't, they didn't do this, right? It's becoming very important that you communicate, nurture, retain, your money as it is for most businesses, right? So how do businesses right now generate more clients? Ads, right? Uh, um, social, right? Um, uh, networks, you know, how do they do it? Trade shows, right? Um, strategic alliances, right? So right now, this is why email marketing is super, super important to a lot of people. So if you haven't been collecting names, we need to set up a system to collect names. All our automation specialists here, all our sales funnel people here, you should be flat out right now. You should be so freaking busy, right? But here's the thing, nobody knows what you do and nobody knows how you can help them. That's who, those people who are not busy right now, is because they're not actively engaging the market and not letting the market know how they can help them or what they need to do. But right now, any automation funnel person here should be literally uh, having to hire people right now. That's where this market is right now for people, right? So email marketing campaigns, really, really important. Um, uh, we need to improve the way people communicate, offer, retain their customers, right? Next, new ad campaigns, right? The new ad campaigns to let people know that they're still in business, um, uh, that they can buy incentivized deals from them, that they, this is a new way of how we do business. Those ads, that's how our ads need to be reflecting in the marketplace. That's where our ads need to be. The only reason right now people are panicking is because they don't know any of this stuff that I've just been sharing with you, or they're not sure how to put this, uh, put this into place, right? So understand that, that you've got an opportunity to maximize your opportunity, maximize your way that you can advertise in a way to reflect those three things. Let people know that you're in business, be in business. If you're being in business, you need to acquire customers. The fastest way to acquire customers right now is to advertise online. It is cheaper, easier than ever before to run ads online, right? Um, if you're one of the, just to give you a heads up of where to find people who've got cash, anybody that's running TV ads, think if you're watching television right now, uh, or you've been watching TV at night at home or during the day when you switch it on, right? Look at who's running ads in the local market. Like I've seen ads for car window tinting, uh, auto repair. Uh, you, know, you know, right now you need your car, in, when we get back to work, you need your car in good working service order. So we're helping people to make sure that your car is operating because you're going to need it. You're going to need it when you get back to work, right? So car places are advertising right now. Um, air conditioning, uh, um, refinancing is advertising like cra crazy right now. Um, budget uh, people, people who are managing people, debt, uh, debt uh, um, um, uh, 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 insolvency, debt, lawyers. There's all these people advertising on television. TV advertising is not cheap. 
That means these people have got lots of money and they can reach a more targeted audience online than they can spreading the message to the mass market on mainstream media. So look at who's taking foot in the local market. Look at businesses that are taking full page ads in the newspaper, in your um, magazines that are out there that are available. Who's taking full, uh, who's taking ads on radio, all your local uh, radio people know. And look at the ads. So one of, the other thing I'd like you to pay attention to is pay attention to how those people that have adjusted what would be a traditional offer to be an offer that is relevant to where people are at right now. There's lots of businesses that have been very clever to change their messaging to help people in this time. So those businesses right now that are advertising in mainstream, what can you do to help them to advertise online? And what are you doing with all the leads that they generate? How are they managing those leads to convert those leads? Anybody that, if you, we've got a lot of people in Champions that do lead management, right? Where right now you've got software. Uh, if you go to sellgosell.com, there's software that you can use to manage uh, 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 incoming inquiries, uh, voice drops, text messaging, um, uh, emails, email campaign. You can manage a lead in real time and it actually does reporting for you as well. So not just offering lead generation, but if you're going to do lead gen, what if we manage those leads and maximize the opportunity of having that type of conversation in the marketplace? Um, Funnel, so is saying uh, funnels more so than social media at this time, or they or they probably work together. Yes, they do work together, but if you don't have a process to manage ed communication with your clients, uh, what are the you know? Do you have an opportunity to create upsells or cross sell other products or services, or educate about another thing they can take advantage of? Right now, the people that are that are desperately looking at ways of trying to communicate this message, accountants, financial planners, insurance guys, um, all these people right now, because they've not got their act together online, and now sitting there going, "Holy crap, I've got to get myself online." All these people who used to do face to face meetings, they don't need to do face to face meetings anymore they can go virtual holy crap how i'm going to manage my clients virtually um how you know crm integration big business right now crm integration with online services big business right so things like integrating uh, your crm with zoom and toki so you can record all your sales calls uh, manage your clients uh, build communication systems in those clients the idea is to pick one thing and you know needs this thing and start asking about doing this um, you know, happy to show you how a plan on how to make this work. Uh, and if you like that, then we can look at a way of working together. If you're not, at least you're fully informed about what your options are. That's the offer that we need to um, uh, do right now. Uh, um, uh, sellgosell.com. If you go to sellgosell.com, you can go there. It's a, you can get a 14-day free trial. Sellgosell.com. Yeah, if you go there, you'll get a free trial. Yeah. Um, uh, can anybody see uh, the current screen? Can anybody see the current screen? I'm moving it up and down. Just type one if you can pick. Uh, awesome. Okay. So somebody just said they can't see my screen. Um, maybe they're just looking at it. Awesome. Okay. So email marketing, new ad campaigns, right? Um, the big question is, is how can you, how are you serving your customers remotely? This is a great way. So if you know a way, if you have a way of helping people to serve their customers remotely, then guess what? You've got an open market. We have one of our people right now. Yep, that's it, that's it. Um, thank you. So sell, S-E-L-L, dot -L -L com, right? Um, so we have a lot of people in the market right now that, by the way, you can white label that software and it does everything for you. And you can just, uh, it's amazing. Charge your clients. Uh, you can literally build, build a whole management system. In Consulting Champions, we actually run a whole truck program and process on how to maximize. You know those deals, the $100,000 deals? That's what we're doing in Champions. We're showing you how to close $100,000 deals with that type of strategy and that type of structure. We've had four of our clients close six-figure deals in the last week in the middle of lockdown, uh, just using that structure uh, and the training we're doing in Champions. So anyway, that's, another, that's a whole other story. So um, how can you help, right? How can we help the market is what we're trying to answer the question of right now, okay, in terms of what we're doing, okay? So how can they serve their customers remotely? What type of ways in which they can do that? We've done that in PT. I've just shared an example of a fencing contractor. How many other contractors that they don't need to be there? Decking guys, pergolas, awnings, um, you know, things they don't 
communication with us online. You know, show people how they can be in business online. That's what they're looking for right now. Okay, so skills needed right now, and there's a whole bunch more, right? But right now, people need strategy right now. They need strategy. One of our consulting champions is sitting down. They're a web development company, and they uh, basically manage uh, uh, branding and messaging, and they do that online for their clients, right? But a lot of their clients have seen how they effectively manage a large team working remotely, right? And so they said, they say, listen, you know, we, we need help right now. We need to manage our employees and our teams remotely. So what they've done is they put a package together and a training that they put to the market to all their clients. Say, hey, we're doing a training right now. We're going to show you exactly all the tools, the process, how to plan in this market. And guess what? They're getting more website deals because what do you what do people have to do? They have to change their websites, they have to change their message right now. They're getting people saying, Yes, I love the training. They're charging people for that training. But here's the thing: they're charging people five thousand and ten thousand dollars just for strategy. Just for strategy, right? The plan, the process, what you need to do, what you need to take action on there. We need designers. We need creatives out there. We need to. We need those people to. We need those people for banners. We need those people for websites. We need the designers. The design industry massively growing right now. Right. We need copywriters. Now there are three types of copywriters. Right. There's email copywriters. We need those. Right. There are sales page copywriters. Email copywriters and sales page copywriters. Two different people. Two different people. Right. Person who writes a sales page is terrible at writing emails, right? Person who writes emails is great at writing emails, but terrible at writing sales pages. They're two different people, right? So we need sales page copywriters and we need uh, uh, messaging, copywriters for content, right? And messaging. Uh, the other thing that I forgot to put here is video. Video marketing. Really good for things like Facebook, Google and YouTube and Instagram, all of the above, all the socials, right? All the socials, right? So we absolutely need copywriters in the market, specialists, people who know how to use click funnels, how to integrate with autoresponders, how to use CRM. You right now are in very high demand. You right now are in very high demand because a lot of people need to get this part of their business uh, accurate. I know when I was tra uh, traveling around doing lots of going to a lot of trade shows, talking to companies, I'm talking hundred million dollar plus companies that didn't know what an autoresponder was. They did, weren't using a proper, uh, simple customer relationship management software like Salesforce to manage their teams. They were using spreadsheets in SAP uh, systems. Hundred million dollar plus companies where the marketing director didn't know that you actually broad broadcast a campaign through email, right? Uh, imagine that. What kind of marketing director is that, right? But there are people that don't know, right? There are people that don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, um, questions, 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 questions. Questions. Happy to answer any questions you've got right now. The way. You just type in the big, be great. Just type in the biggest takeaway you've had so far. Takeaway you've had so far from what I've just shared with you. We've had. Adam says, I'm charging too little. Yes, you might be. Uh, is it better to contact the marketing director or the CEO? Better to contact the CEO rather than marketing director. Um, um, yeah, current marketing directors don't know everything about marketing. Uh, Alan says, more advertising. Absolutely. Let me tell you, advertising should be on the rise. Should be on the rise. Um, what have we got? Uh, what do I charge for consulting? Um, I generally do, if I was doing, uh, uh, if you want to spend an hour with me on the phone talking direct strategy stuff, um, then um, 
uh, anywhere from about $800 to $1,000 an hour. If we we're just talking very specific strategy stuff, if I was selling my time for money, it'd be a thousand bucks an hour. Um, in a package sense, generally the average client's paying uh, anywhere between 30 and 50,000 uh, just for strategy, just for, just for consulting strategy at that level, yeah. Um, that's, for, that's if I was doing consulting. You're asking me if I was doing direct consulting for clients, that's, that's the range. Um, it, it has gone, I've done uh, stuff uh, in terms of strategy, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, for, for, for clients uh, who've used my consulting, right? Uh, my consulting champions uh, that I work with that get access to me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that is a mastermind program. I'm not really here to talk about that. If you want to know, if you want to spend some time or you want to speak to me about I guess how I can help you. If you just go to, if you go to John Logar or call johnlogar.com, if you go to call johnlogar.com, um, uh, you can grab some time and, uh, and see if I can help you personally uh, with your, uh, with your um, uh, business. Sorry, I'll just put that on here. If you want to help, if you want me to help you personally, you can go to calljohnlogar.com. If you want to ask me questions, if you want to see how I can help from a mastermind point of view and what we're doing, because uh, at the moment in Champions, we are actually, we've got a lot of champions that are closing lots of deals and I'm being amazed at the different niches that are actually closing deals. So um, um, disrupt the buyer journey, see which parts you can take online. Uh, that, is an op that is an opportunity. Yes, it is the opportunity. Uh, Google is giving free ad credits to current active small business advertisers. Uh, they are Kristen, and you just want to make sure you're very clear about how they can access that as well. Facebook did this post, I think, last week where they're going to give, over, give away $100 million worth of Facebook ads uh, to small business. But uh, I'm not sure. I know that, uh, uh, that that's been taken up. Um, uh, uh, in the marketplace already. And I'm sure there's going to be other uh, systems and processes in place. Um, best strategy to contact the CEO when you get uh, directed to managers who may see you as a threat. So Chris, this is a really interesting question. It's a great question, uh, a very interesting question. Um, so first, of, first and foremost, uh, who's going to write the check? Uh, whoever's going to write the check is the person I need to speak to. Now, some marketing directors actually have a budget, right? They actually have a budget. Um, uh, and in that budget, they can spend up to 100000 or more dollars. Some of them have a million dollar budget. In fact, I spoke to a marketing director that can sign off on $2 million in their budget. So they can, they, the marketing director is the person that signs off on the budget, right? A lot of marketing directors can't sign off on a budget. So what can they sign off up to? Right, is the key here. If they have to go to a CEO for the decision, then you've got to incorporate the CEO in the decision-making process. You've got to talk more, more strategic, more at a higher level with the CEO. And if they have a person, you want the CEO and that person to be together. Now, if the CEO pushes you down to the marketing director, this is what you're going to do. You're going to make sure, you're going to say to the marketing director, look, we're here to help and we're here to make you look great. And we're here to do the very thing and that is to help you move forward uh, in the company. So we have systems and strategies that will, that will support your ideas and the things that you're working together. The goal is that we help you to move forward. And what we're going to do is anything that we discuss, I'm going to be sharing with the CEO because the CEO has asked me to speak to you in relation to how we help. So anything that we do here, I will, I'm going to keep the CEO in the loop, right? So you'll, you know, if you do a phone conversation with people or a video conversation, which I would highly recommend on Zoom, then you're going to record that and you're going to provide that to the CEO. So you're keeping the CEO in the loop. Because if the CEO, if you go to a marketing director and the marketing director now has to go back to the CEO to get an approval on a budget, the first thing the CEO is going to ask that marketing director is, have you looked at other options? That's the first thing I'm going to say. And because the CEO has no relationship with you and doesn't understand what's going on and doesn't understand a strategy, you're asking the, man, the marketing director to be your salesperson. And, it's, and by the way, the marketing director doesn't want to make a mistake, right? They're more worried that they're going to make a mistake and they're going to look bad. So in the CEO's mind, they're looking for leadership from the marketing director to take ownership of their role, right? And make a decision. And they're going to be directed by, they in some ways are going to be directed by that decision. But the CEO is going to ask questions like, do we need to be doing this right now? Why do we need to be doing this right now? That means the, now the, the director has to sell that to the CEO, right? So what you want to do is you want to keep the CEO in the loop. And if you do a presentation on delivery, you're going to say, hey, it's really important that anybody who's involved in the strategic uh, decision-making of this company moving forward, anybody that's involved in any, making any financial decisions for this company needs to be in on this meeting. If you're not in on this meeting, then we can't work together. 
because it's going to be a no. Unless the director can uh, uh, sign off, right, then you can work with the director, right? Um, getting emails from LinkedIn through any leads and using Dean Jackson's line word email effective during this COVID-19. Um, yes, uh, it's effective all the time, Michael. Um, uh, running uh, nine word emails, Dean Jackson's line word emails is, are you interested in this thing right now? Uh, can I help you with this thing right now? Um, would you like to get this thing right now? Uh, small, short, punchy emails are very powerful for getting people to respond. They work really well. You should be using it intermittently in your marketing campaigns. So yes, um, any other questions? Any other questions? I think I've just, uh, contact, contacting CEO is, is uh, uh, direct mail is a great way to get into the CEO. If you do registered mail and the CEO has to sign off on it, now you've got your information in that CEO's hands. So that's one way, that's a very powerful way. We've used that uh, uh, in Breakthrough. We used to send a shock and all package where they have to actually physically sign for it. And then we gave them instructions on a video on what they have to do with the package. So they had to watch this video and say, hey, here's what we do. So give them written instructions and video instructions. Worked really well, very powerful. Um, uh, what niches are spending the big bucks for email marketing? Financial planners, insurance, banks, um, uh, accounting firms, law firms in every genre, anything to do with uh, workplace uh, uh, issues. Um, uh, mediation is going through the roof. Um, you know, I can, we can list, uh, uh, Howard, I can list about 500 different businesses right now that are spending money on marketing. And so here's the thing that you need to be thinking about. And it's not just about big bucks. Anybody that's running mainstream advertising has got big bucks. Anybody spending $50,000 a month on a billboard has got big bucks. Anybody, so my question to you, Howard, is what is big bucks? Is big bucks a couple of thousand dollars a month to you? Is big bucks $100,000 a month budget to you? It, that, that's what you need to be thinking about here. What is big bucks? The other thing I wanna say is uh, there's less competition at the big buck level, right? There's less competition at the big buck level. But if you're going to go at the big bucks, you have to know your stuff. You have to be a freaking expert because if you're not an expert, you're going to be kicked out of the kick to the curve really quickly. So if you're going to ask people for big bucks, you better be ready to deliver big buck strategy. Yeah. If that's, the, if that's what you're looking for. So to me, big buck is somebody who's going to spend, you know, uh, six figures plus that's, to me, uh, in terms of businesses, that's, that's at the medium to low level. At the low, low level, a small business market, uh, for them, big bucks is spending 50 grand on something. That's big bucks. You know, for some businesses, spending two or three grand a month, that's big bucks, right? Uh, for other businesses, um, uh, there are businesses right now that are happy to start write checks out to for 50, 100. As I'm seeing with my consulting champions, they're closing deals at 100 grand, right? $100,000 for email marketing but they're going to companies that, that don't mind writing checks for $100,000. They don't think twice about that because they've got millions of dollars in payroll to meet. So to write a check for $100,000 is like a no-brainer, right? Well, it's not the no-brainer. It's not that hard to do because they're used to writing those checks, right? But, but uh, if that's the question you're asking, which niche is every niche, every top player in every market right now. You know, um, uh, there's, a, there's a company in Australia that's literally, uh, uh, almost, well, had to shut its doors and go online. It's called Flight Centre Australia. They're the largest travel company in Australia. Um, they're still running ads on TV. Like they've had to shut all their stores. Their market, uh, their, 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 um, their market share price has dropped by more than 75% in the last month, but they're still running ads on television. They still know that they're gonna be the biggest travel company coming out of this when people start to travel. So they're still using strategies to communicate with the marketplace. So that's the, that's the thing. When you say big bucks, Howard, I wanna understand what do you mean by big bucks? Do you mean a couple of grand a month? Five grand a month? hundred grand a month? A million a month? Because right now I know e-commerce guys that are spending about two, $3 million a month in Facebook ads. Now in this current economy, in this market, two to three million bucks a month in Facebook ads. That's big budget, right? 10 to 25K, that's a medium budget. Any company, five million to uh, $20 million can afford 10 to 25K. So you need to look at companies that are five million to uh, 25 million. Uh, the reason for that is because those companies, to be $5 million companies or to stay five and $20 million companies need to be marketing and need to be advertising. So, so 10 to 20K. And my question to you, Howard, is right now, are you managing 10 to $25,000 ad budgets or marketing budgets. 
because if you if you are then that's awesome if you're not managing those budgets right now then my question to to you is uh how are you going to manage somebody's budget at that level right because they're going to ask you questions right right so ten, if you you know it's all really good that i want 10 to twenty five thousand dollars customers my question is what is your strategy what is how are you going to give them a hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars return on investment for every 10 grand they spend with you that's the question you need to answer howard right they're going to spend five grand how can i get them 50. if they're going to spend 10 grand how can i get them 100. if they're going to spend 25 how can i get them 250 or more right the minimum that you want to be looking at is a five to one return that's the minimum you're looking, you're aiming for but if as the budget gets bigger that return will get lower right then it becomes a volume play right then it becomes a volume play the lowest ever will be a one to three three to one is where you're breaking even on margin three to one right um uh mail shake is good or quickmail.io uh quickmail.io so it's uh quickmail.io uh that's a really good one that's one word quickmail.io not two words um woodpecker is great or any of those any of those services are great as long as they can actually manage open rates and uh, reporting and they've got you know you also got to be mindful of how you run the strategy um, you know, if you're going to, instead of, if you're going to seed uh, some Gmail emails, you've got to be seeding them with, with really low uh, traffic. Uh, if you have Outlook as your email, uh, you probably would get better results using Outlook email as opposed to Gmail accounts using those cold email services. Um, I'm happy to take one more question. Um, uh, other, and uh, I'm going to go enjoy the day just to... Uh, so that, I know there's a lot of people on Sunday night, but it is Monday morning, and this is what Monday morning looks like in Australia. I don't know if you can see that right now, but the ocean is blue and the surf is looking really good. Lots of, there are people, there are people self-isolating in the surf. How cool is that <laughs> right now? Um, targeting e-commerce store uh, owners uh, um, uh, right now for them, they uh, there's two. So if they're doing Amazon FBA, they're screwed right now. They have to go. They have to change the shift. Uh, their um, uh, where they're sending their product. That's number one. So who's drop shipping their product? They need to look for alternatives. Number two, uh, e-commerce stores need to be thinking to get off Amazon and have their own uh, platform that they can drive traffic to. So for me, uh, who's got an email? Uh, uh, who's got an email? Um, uh, list is probably the biggest thing right now. Our the people that I'm working with that are in the e-commerce space are, are working with people who have both Amazon and non-Amazon platforms. Um, but they realise that they've been very terrible at communicating with these existing clients. Uh, they also work with, in fact, we've got a couple of people who are working high end on e-commerce stores of email marketing and with advertising, uh, especially with Clavio, which is a platform that's designed to manage customers through uh, e-com stores. Um, so uh, you know, the big, the big approach or the big angle really is uh, right now you need to keep people buying. People need to be aware of the product. Uh, are you innovating on your offers? Are you innovating on the way that you run your campaigns? Uh, those are the messages that I would be going out there into marketplace. I uh, would like to target businesses with past quotes. Every contractor business with past quotes uh, uh, is a business. So any business that is a contractor, they've got past quotes. Any people who's, who are running quotes for insurance, um, uh, for mortgages, anybody that's got those sorts of businesses um, need your help and they need to run a campaign to reignite past quotes into current customers. Uh, and they need creative offers as well. What, uh, what would you post or advertise as a message to attract leads? Um, I would be thinking about, the, uh, if you go back to what I talked about before, right? Um, uh, what to, sorry, uh, um, this here, the three offers, right? I would I would be running camp I would be running campaigns that would be in alignment with hey I take there are three things right now that you need to do as a business owner and if and and right now you have the opportunity to generate revenue or cash flow um, uh, relatively quickly and so the number one thing that you need to be doing is think about all past quotes now if you're going to follow them up you need a way in which to follow them up effectively so the ads are how to take advantage of your current clients how to take advantage of prospective and past clients how to take advantage for the first time of your list to make sure that you're maximizing uh, your opportunity for revenue right now and making sure that you're letting people know that you're in business and making sure that you are making offers that are sensitive and relevant to where your customers are right now. That's the type of campaigning that I would do uh, in the marketplace. 
Do you know a database of e-commerce sites per country? No, but there's this thing called builtwith.com. Um, if you go to da, 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 dot builtwith.com, um, there, if you go to that website, you can actually put in a website like Magento, Shopify, and all those sorts of things. And you can literally, uh, for, I think for $297, you can go and scrape 5,000 e-commerce sites that are using those platforms. That's one of the fastest ways. And also you can find people who have lead lists in there. Um, thank you, Carl, I really appreciate that. Peter. Uh, uh, okay. So um, I've answered all your questions. Look, thank you. Um, I'm gonna place this recording. One thing that I'd like to ask you, if you can uh, please subscribe to the Consulting Unleashed YouTube channel. Um, we are putting these, posting these videos in the YouTube channel. Um, can you share, if you haven't already, jump in the Consulting Unleashed Facebook group. Um, uh, join that group because I'm posting these videos in that particular group. Uh, if you can let people know that I'm offering these trainings uh, daily. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna to be talking about some, uh, some key things you need to be thinking from a, a business point of view, all the things that businesses need to be addressing and how we can actually use some of those things to engage the market. I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow. Um, so if you can let people know that I'm doing this, that is great. Um, uh, if you want to talk to me personally, make some time on my calendar if you, if you, if you want to see what we're doing over at Consulting Champions. Um, uh, just go to calljohnlogar.com. I think I put the link up here on the chat. Uh, you can grab some time in my calendar. I'm happy to find out where you're at, what you want to do, and if you really want to scale. Because uh, right now, all our champions right now are, uh, a lot of them are absolutely flying at the moment. We're generating clients hand over fist, uh, in, and they're doing it in ways, or they're doing it in markets that I thought that were stressed, uh, but uh, you know, people are still buying out there. We're seeing a lot of people still wanting to do business. A lot of the agencies we're working with are getting lots of inquiries from businesses they've spoken to in the past and saying, hey, you know, we didn't believe Facebook could work, but you know, we're seeing our competitors advertise right now, we need to be in there. Um, the Facebook group name is Consulting Unleashed. Consulting Unleashed. So Consulting Unleashed. If you go to Consulting Unleashed Facebook group, um, uh, then I will let you in or my team will let you in and you'll be able to access these videos uh, that we'll be posting uh, every day. So if you want to go to the YouTube channel, it's going to be there. On the YouTube channel right now, there are 183 videos, lead generation, tactical approaches, market strategies, everything is on there. It is free. YouTube right now are things that are useful for people who need help uh, to, uh, need help in the market with. So if you want real clear ideas, strategies, and business focus, then I would highly recommend that you subscribe to the Consulting Unleashed YouTube channel. So with that, I want to thank you for being here. As I said, I have recorded this. We're going to be putting this up into uh, those channels. If you know of anybody who needs to be here, share the link uh, that you that you signed up in. Uh, if you can share that to people, I am here. Same time, same bat channel every day. For those people who don't know what bat channel is, back in the 60s and 70s, Batman used to run a TV show. And at the end of the TV show, they used to say, see us, same time, same bat channel uh, every day. So I'm going to be here, same time, same bat channel every single day. Um, uh, thanks for being here. I hope you're, um, uh, I'm just going to stop sharing here for just a moment. Um, uh, please be safe. Please look after yourself. Please be mindful. Reach out to people. This is a great opportunity to connect with friends, family, associates, even people you might have done business with. Just say, hey, how are you going? Are you okay? Uh, if you want to have a chat, let's have a chat. This is an opportunity for you to be connecting whilst you're in this lockdown uh, uh, period. Uh, thank you for being here. As I said, I'm going to be here tomorrow. Uh, new ideas, new tactics, and you can ask me all the questions you like. I want to be able to help as many people as possible. Thanks. Take care, everybody.